Hello and welcome to the Wigtown Book Festival and the Wigtown Poetry Prize Giving event. I'm Marjorie Lotfi Gill. I'm the chair of the Board of Trustees for the Wigtown Festival Company and a poet myself. I'm delighted to welcome you here with us this evening. Um, I want to start by saying thank you to our sponsors for um, supporting this event and the previous events as well. That's the Gaelic Book Council and the Saltire Society, as well as some private support. We wouldn't be here tonight without you, so we're really grateful to you for helping us put the prize on and put the competition on and helping us put tonight on as well. So thank you. Tonight, um, we're not together in person, but we're together online. And the way that the event is going to run is we're going to go through each prize um, with the judge, who will then tell us about how they judge the prize and introduce the runner-up and the winner. We'll start with Anna Freiter, and we'll have George T. Watt, and then Roseanne Watt running us through the Gallic Prize, the Scots Prize, and the Wigtown Prize, as well as the Alistair Reid Pamphlet Prize, not, uh, and then we'll be finishing off with the Fresh Voice Award. Last year, we introduced the Alistair Reid Pamphlet Prize uh, because Alistair Reid is a local hero to many of us here, and we started the event by reading one of his poems, so I thought we would do that again tonight, and then I'll hand over to the judges and to some of our sponsors to introduce each part of the event this evening. So I thought I would read one of his poems. I got to choose, which was exciting. Um, I thought I would read Weathering, which is a poem of his that I've always really admired. So here we go. Weathering. I am old enough now for a tree once planted knee high to have grown to be 20 times me and to have seen babies marry and heroes grow deaf, but that's enough meaning of life. It's living through time we ought to be connoisseurs of. From wearing a face all this time, I am made aware of the maps faces are of the inside wear and tear. I take to faces that have come far. In my father's carved face, the bright eye he sometimes would look out of, seeing a long way through all the tree rings of his history. I am awed by how things weather. An oak mantle in the house in Spain, fingered to a sheen, the marks of hands leaned into the lintel, the tokens in the drawer I sometimes touch, a crystal lived in on a trip, the watch my father's wrist wore to a thin gold sandwich. It is an equilibrium which breasts the cresting season, but still stays calm and keeps warm. It deserves a good name, weathering, patina, Gloss and whorl, the trunk of the almond tree, gnarled but still fruitful. Weathering is what I would like to do well. So we're delighted to come back to Alistair's um, pamphlet prize, or the pamphlet prize we've named after him later on in the evening. But we're going to just kick off right away with the Gaelic, um, the Wigtown Scottish Gaelic Prize. And I'm going to ask Alison Lang, who's here from the Gaelic Book Council, to say a few words about their work and their support of the prize. And then she's going to hand on to Anna Freiter to talk about the prize itself and her judging of it, as well as the winners. Alison. Tepanet of Archery, Agus Fiskerma, a Karsten, Hami Uavasuk, Tarichi, we call the Rivenok, Get Nahuringain Ulivi, Aunun Wigtown, Tank Gunna Technolus, a hacking, a Suringin Hast, Shaw, a Yenu Anok. In spite of the strange year that we are having, mm -hmm. it's great that we are able to have this competition and this prize evening, um, despite everything that has that has gone on to change what we would otherwise have done. And my thanks to Marjorie and the whole team at Wigtown um, for ensuring that the festival and the competition have gone ahead. Every year, people write new poetry to enter this competition. And I love the fact that new voices emerge that we hear from some poets that we're already familiar with, some brand new people, and that this is um, 
a recognition of the talent that exists in Gaelic poetry and indeed in Scots and English poetry too. I guess a hula bliona ha a barst kriuchoch, um, ed a hug, not ed a turg, a son of eat, no bliv, ed a nuisho. And I am also particularly pleased that this year's judge is um, a very well respected poet um, who has two uh, collections, uh, Von Kliege and more recently Kriya Kreke, um, of uh, very beautiful, sharp, witty, and thought provoking poetry. Um, her poetry appeals very much to uh, to many readers and personally to me, I'm a great fan. And I would therefore like to introduce Anna Freiter, who has been this year's um, Gaelic judge. Um, I guess her Anna Dolaginchivin Koha is a Duish, I guess a Darna Duish, a Wolachug, I guess Kerson, Anna. Tapalet Alison, good job of the Dola Room, Emiliana. Um, the code is Lichet Dan, a steak, a son, the Farkish Emiliana, sir. I guess a vor vor hut you shin, a gira guma art. Um, I guess a shishin hami lishi that a lishi shield to hand, uer is uer is uer, gusn beranic me a yarlist, I guess, my yerich in yish. Mae'n mis mynd o'r gyfa os cewn chaig. Um, it wasn't an easy uh, task this year. There were over 50 poems uh, in the Gaelic category, uh, all of a very high standard, and it took a lot of sifting and reading and rereading and uh, the, the, the pile on one side gradually getting bigger while the, the one on the other side was getting smaller till I... I um, uh, came to my final decision. The first thing you have to know, fein ki a tiri shi la sa vil shi va 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 dor loch va haun ma yin COVID. I guess we lost. I guess kusper and ki a tiri shi va stylishen at the yaldi jo kujok. I guess va fein yau na va Garich, I guess green, I guess fine yellow in the sachet, I guess the smear hall. Ah, vina, vina hock, get the vai, nagul and kujok. Um, so a huge variety of subjects, uh, COVID, as you would expect, made an appearance. Um, but, um, there was a huge variety of subjects, uh, styles of poetry, and it was uh, a pleasure as well as a uh, a problem I had in uh, judging. Um, as a Norna Hatch, um, a uh, ha, um, Dan Glet Morrigan and Gail, I guess I'm a Torish Vegan Gully Show, um, on the Norshan Cori Gari, um, Horden Anshan Shuram Homor, Rami, um, Nefarok in your in Curing Hill on a Gallic Gallic Huloch Fierstoch Grain. A veteran rocks the Rikim, Erin Kamal Kushul, or Tron Troninani Fat. I guess Hanning's the Gree. I ran Hasho, Hachi Rofi, who he phoned. I guess I mean, no, has a bora gamma gafai Kujik and a Huris phone, Rish, son Hachi Roch Ali. I guess the Hamino has a Ginghu Morsh to scribe, had the scribe accorded him a Gumor. The runner up prize goes to Moragan McNeil. Um, for her poem on the Norshan Kori Gari, which I think it's it's a song just waiting for a tune. Mm -hmm. So uh Vora Kana Namori Mutalive. Pah Belachri Jera Amla uh Shokat Avars the Kakam Seth. Alma Moshan Kuri Garai. Alma Moshan Kuri Garai for Luid Kriv and Blas Nakvain. Fuam and Powdy, Namoch Lawson, Hoy me, Tach and Bake Lumhain. Tamil Bake a Misk Nablahan, a Shither Fushtach, a was she. Misk Tustach Village, Vashich Marbid, 
tan parte saliach aun skachni. Trobatas a traskrig minjan, eishlan granyal is mi hinge. Margruch gaharnaram asna speren, hakianalus gamakal chin. Smuanjan bruyanach gan trokid, gam horstachu, scam hur pavin. Mike na rioslach ida puedug. Le du lamach na nyumuglin. Ach chanel anam aha krachjach, et patsel yat na krinyke. A harmich tra anoshan garai, sa chanel nach der reine theme. She hab sochkit hakut ludum, skun fuam ach koshi the barn and geek. Gun forachke muntudum vronach, a gutagat a hood irglees. Von Hala Hirtach Shochan Yurin, Karachur, a Huid in Bio, is Ochjak Hun, a Torch from Hohid, a Yaluroch, Blan and Rose. Chim Gumarna Lochak was it, Jorachur Kahuder Stree, Fatikian, Bavuadis Suhil, and Garach Shoch, Nahiolich Green. Tapala. Tapalit, Varagana. I guess in Nanda Sikhia Dach, a Erisht, Vami Chilik, Hunanan show Erisht, Sidisht, I guess, and the Kitch Guru Shanheen, Nahumore Guru, a Ritigam Sorich, a Mayen. A Hordaram Gaharaj Manahai Tokaliski, a lock, Anichje, I guess. Gnach Quat Rishvo to Nachashin Klechjevi Quat Rish. Um, I guess it is Sarvar Doch Erechur Sichele Gu Grain, I guess, er Gnachoda Hamido Yuri, it in the Scriva, Nilo Gallaher, er Leave again. It's the second poem, the the winning poem, I should say, sorry. <laughs> the winning poem uh, is uh, a well-known story, but looked at from a very different angle. And uh, so I would like to ask uh, Nilo Gallagher, the poet, to read it. Aplatana. Um, this poem comes from the part in the Odyssey when Penelope, who has been making and secretly unmaking a shroud for three years, is caught in the act. And I'm interested in Penelope's motive. Is she, as is often assumed, simply playing for time until her husband Odysseus returns? Or is it actually to do with something completely different? Penelope. And it begins with a quotation from the Gallic translation of Homer's Odyssey. Ye nishin ni the la of yars for a skill in yastaiki. Hymi fat tri blien eke chail, a fig anarchs and kurstig and re, gin chloi betres a rhymi ye, bevin ye heen me the vyarsti, lim live loom. Rhymi gach snail and oosglu, a gis hooch galar gachaike, fuel mo prochin, gin duk me jihil, a gis grag bevin and grag in ye, hook me the vile a hoop. Hanoun den yer of rish machrie, Nyoga ahid is son the kishje, a raimi gachlin ya hurt from live, gach ripak margua lenin, nas spian of voim torrid nyelin, movidial, mahaski, peke grai. Tap live. Thank you. Um, thank you to the, to the winners for those beautiful readings. Even if you don't speak Gaelic, and I don't, it, you can hear the musicality of them. So that's a, that's a lovely thing for us to hear. But also thank you to Anna and Alison for those wonderful introductions. We are thrilled um, to have you with us the, this evening, all four of you. So thank you very much. We are going to shift rooms, as it were, <laughs> and put in the Scots, um, the Scots Prize winners as well. And... Uh, and switch over. So thank you. Give us a moment and we'll swap over. I should say that if you're um, if you're wanting to find out more about our judges, you can find out their, about their biographies and other things that they've written on our website. 
So I'm just waiting for the rest of the Scots group to come in and we'll start there. Here we are, almost. Hello, George. <laughs> Terrific. So I'm, I'm going to hand over to Dolly McLennan of the Saltire Society, who's going to say a little bit about the work they do and the support of the prize. We're grateful to them for their yearly support of the prize. Um, and then she'll hand over to George T. Watt, our judge, who will say a little bit about the judging and the two poems that we're going to hear. Thanks, to, thanks Dolly. I'll swap over to you now. Thank you. Am I, am I on? <laughs> well, Feskin Magaiva Harjan, good evening to you all. Uh, I'm here in my role as uh, vice chair, uh, vice convener of the Saltire Society, and to say how happy we are in the society to be able to continue our support of the Wiction uh, Festival and, in particular, the Scots poetry. Um, for over 80 years, Yes, we are that old. Uh, the Saltire Society has championed all aspects of our culture and especially very proud of our support of our indigenous languages in both prose and poetry. But without such events as the book festivals, the literary awards and competitions, maybe there would be a danger of, of this part of our, our culture to be hidden. Uh, from the majority of, of people who are not interested in, in such. But this brings it, the, the Wigton Book Festival, the Literary Awards, it brings it right into people's homes, especially doing it this way. Um, so um, as long as the Saltire Society uh, keeps going, uh, we'll never ever allow that to happen. So uh, congratulations to the winners. And I believe that I'm going to hand over to George T. Watt now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dolly. Yeah, thank you, Dolly. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to do the Scots section. And first of all, I think we ought to congratulate the Wigton folk for putting this on. This is a marvellous event and under the conditions, you know, this is really great. And a chance to reach out right around the world to folk who maybe never been to Scotland in their lives before. Anyway, in the Scots section, there were 81 poems, but 10 didn't actually match the criteria. Some of them were in English for some reason. <laughs> but the, of the 71 that were there, uh, the standard was just incredibly high. It was really, really great to have them all there. And if you put the whole lot into a volume, it would be a very fine volume indeed. And uh, it would be great to think that somebody could do that. It really would be. Uh, for the Scots Language Society, we would love to publish some of the poems in our Lallans magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you haven't got a publisher, do you think of sending them in to us? And we have our own Scots and label, and we'd like to record some of them too. So anyway, the subjects covered were like the Gaelic section. COVID turned up. Cancer was there. Alzheimer's was there. There was... Funnard ships and Funnard social life, Funnard folk. And uh, there's even a love poem in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I was asked to make up a short leap of five poems, but my short leap was actually 27 poems. <laughs> there was just, they were that good, they really were. And, uh, you know, congratulations to everybody who entered because they put in a really good shift and good work. So anyway, it was a sort of hurt I had to reject some. But uh, I think we've already been given the, the, the ones in the short lead. I'll just go through them quickly. Uh, of the short lead, one was cried on for, and it was about uh, a football match or a, a training session. And then this on for comes in, you know, a really bad squall, the hail and sleet and snow, and everybody runs for cover, and all the mums and dads grab the wee laddies and head off. And there's one wee boy left to hint, and this is Omar from Syria, and uh, the speaker of the poem doesn't know kind of what to do, because his own wee boy is tugging his sleeve, and he's greeting with a call. And the uh, poem made me great, just thinking about it, it really does, and he put it beautifully together. The next one was cried, Eolachi. Now, Eolas is uh, king of withers, and Eolachi is his Scottish cousin, so <laughs> that just makes you laugh thinking about it. 
And it's a really broad, humorous poem, and it's great to see humor coming through poetry because some folk are awfully serious with their poetry. <laughs> so it was really good. And uh, this geo gives us the grits of what we cry conversation. And uh, without the weather, we didn't really hear a lot of talk about it sometimes. I'm not going to tell you the punchline because it's a cracker. Uh, somebody's got to have to publish that so you can get it. Uh, the next poem in the short leap was one about Lazarus. And we all know the story of Lazarus and the sisters are waiting for Jesus and he doesn't come. And somebody put this into Scots and they uh, wrote a poem about the two sisters talking. Why didn't they come? Why didn't they come? They know we were waiting, you know, and they must have had a reason. And all this stuff's going through their heads. And there's another one for Mary McLeod, Barry McClutch. Is that be right? Uh, Mary was yet at head doing for being a a bardock of the clan instead of a wife and a mother and, and all the rest. So she went right against the, the roles of put out for her. And she doesn't regret it at all. So this is a wee poetry about that. And it's great to have a poem in Scots about something related to the guilt. I thought that tickled my, uh, my fancy a wee bit. Who never on to the runner-up. The runner-up was a poem cried Einster Harbour, Ogmany, and it was by Wally Hershaw. Now, I hate to admit that when I read this, I knew who this had to be. It had to be Wally. And uh, so I put it away. I said, oh, well, I can't, can't judge you. I'll put that aside. I can't pick it. But it kept coming back to me and coming back to me and coming back to me, even though I was ignoring it, you know. And it's a great wee poem. It's about the poet sees dolphins in New Year's morning from Inster Harbour. That's uh, Anne's brother, for those who don't know Ken. And uh, it's just a short lyrical poem. But uh, you talk about the dolphins and their search for prey. You know, these aren't little funny, funny creatures. These are animals killing other animals for their breakfast, you know. And it's really good, Scott. It's an interesting point of view. And it's in a nice, crisp fashion like the morning itself. And it shows how with just a few words you can say an awful lot. So I'll hand over now to Wally to read out his poem. Hi there, everybody. Um... When I wrote this poem, I was thinking about the tradition in Scots of uh, first fitting a neighbour's house uh, at that time of the year, at Hugman And uh, traditionally, a New Year visitor was supposed to be tall, dark and uh, handsome and bring the symbolic gifts of a lump of coal and a fish to the household that was being visited. Uh, so when I saw the dolphins at Einster Harbour, I kind of wondered what kind of visitors uh, these dolphins were and what kind of luck they would bring for the year ahead. Uh, would it be good or bad or none at all? And um, what news did they, 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 our neighbours bring us of the condition of their planet? So uh, it's quite a simple wee poem and it goes like this. The dolphins cried to Hansel the new year. He's in grey humps just after Kiko do. Lopin their length to kiss the cranra hair. Dukin and jinkin out by the herber wall. First fitters swimming the here and new, stravagin the sea road for chancy swaws. Laughing sea chills mang the sway in the poo. Old feather times sleek at undertoes. Fushing for willy hoes, tumbling for skags, gone in a glisk with her grin hofflin' wise. Bring earth folk their weird, my gallus gaist lads, your ear sib to anthropomorphise. Thank you. Thanks, hey, Willie. <laughs> Ah, that was bro. Are we back on? No. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right, that was that was bro, Willie. And uh, tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, well, that... <laughs> <laughs> right, the winning poem was a poem called A Dry Stained Dyke by Robert Duncan. And I thought this was an exceptional poem. It begins with the lines, I'll big a dry stained dyke by Solway to the tweed. And immediate like, you're thinking, oh, Hadrian, 
or maybe an ultra nationalist who's you know want to take a big dike right across to keep folk out and a big ditch in it. But no, it's neither of these things because it's because he's digging this dike, he's digging this dike, sorry, with good Scots lead. And saying we're treated with many a good Scots word for stains, different types of stains, many a good Scots word for an essay on dike building. I take it <laughs> but by the sound of it, Robert's picking a couple of dikes. I don't care if he has or not, but it sounded like it. And but the most important thing is this is near an impervious dike, you know? Thoughts and ideas can go flow through this dike. And people can cross this dike. It's near built to keep folk in or keep folk out. And I just thought it was a masterful poem, it really was. And uh, there's a lot in there and some of it you have to work out for yourself, which is always a good sign in a poem. You know, it leaves you time to think and feel your way through it. So I'll hand over to Robert Duncan now. Thanks, George. Um, uh, I'm afraid to say I've never built a dry stain dike in my life. Uh, and I, I, w- I wouldn't have where to start. Um, it's, uh, the concern in the poem is really the Scots, about the Scots language, the Scots lead. And what it's saying really is that the language, the Scots language, like the Gaelic language, uh, is as much a part of what makes Scotland Scotland as landscape, architecture, or what have you. So, a dry stained dike. I'll big a dry stained dike for solely to the tweed. And I'll mark Ilka stain a word of good Scots lead. First, lay the sicker hurt doing in its better yard. Misglimmed churls and chads, grummel and grush and gruel, gathered for garths and lanes, blaze for for who it bings, stanners for orkney strands. Sign, rickle it to its foo hecht, tentally, tire by tire, clinkers, lecks and havens, freestain, Kingle, scurdy, risers, parpins, through bands, unclured, undressed, unpunished, no lime or slime or mortar, hudden fair and hain it by their ain wecht and their sub faces. Then there's an emus stain, pace and pace again until it stones as stead as any other. A dry stain dike's no prude. A dry stain dike's no prink. A dry stain dike huds all sorts. Winds or all airs breathe through it, but nane steers it. Both sides are equal. And all Jock Thompson's bairns can add their stains to it. I'll big a dry stain dike for Solway to the Tweed. And I'll go stain will be a word that gets Scots lead. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. That was a joy to listen to. Both both poems were joys, but that was that was a particularly joyful to listen to. Thank you. Thank you to the winners. Thank you to George. Thank you, Dolly, for that lovely introduction as well. Um, congratulations. Uh, it's been it's been a, a great joy to have you. We're going to swap over now to the Wigtown Prize, as well as the Alistair Reid Pamphlet Prize, um, which means we're shifting rooms. And as we do that, I'll say we've had so many more entries this year, not just in the Gaelic and the Scots categories, but um, in all the categories right across the way, which has been a real joy and a lot more work <laughs> for the judges and the sifters. Um, so we're, we're delighted to have so many entries this year. Um, and it means the winners have had much more um competition as it were um, so congratulations all the more so I'm going to hand over to Roseanne um, to uh, talk a little bit about the Wigtown Prize and the judging for that and then we'll do the Alistair Reed pamphlet prize after that if that's okay Roseanne hello hello, hello. <laughs> Um, can, is everything okay? Can you hear me? We fine? can hear you, yep. Great, thank you. And thank you so much for just all of the hard work that's gone into putting this festival on. It's just, yeah. a, it's just been a joy. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, I'm going to read a bit from my uh, 
commentary, um, just a, a an excerpt on what the process was like to judge for this these wonderful prizes. Um, I'll begin with a story from my home island. Um, so there is um, a story from my home island which has been haunting me throughout this quite hideous year of illness. It's about a spring called Hiliabrun, located in Jetland's northernmost island of Unst. Its name means the healing well, according to the old language. And the story goes that it marks the site where a Celtic priest was murdered by a local mob sometime in the fourth century. On realizing that the moment of his demise was imminent, it is said the priest prayed for his death to not be in vain and bring about some tangible good for the people of the island. From the ground on which his body fell, the healing waters of Hiliabrun sprang in answer to his final prayer. Reflecting on the process of reading the entries for my Wigtown, uh, for the Wigtown and Alistair Reed pamphlet prizes, I find my thoughts returning once again to this old folktale. I am drawn, I believe, to the alchemy of it. How in the aftermath of violence, the sight of pain becomes one of healing. It is the same kind of peculiar power that I recognise to be at work in my favourite poems, those which tap into a rare kind of compassion, which express something common and vital in our experience of the world, yet still reflect the precise truth of their own moment, even if that truth might be unbearable. These qualities were certainly at play in the long list of entries I was given for these prizes, delivered to me during the height of the national lockdown, at a time when I myself felt at a complete loss with language. I count myself very lucky now, because the job of reading these entries was to be reminded time and time again of the curious resilience of poetry, and to be returned to some notion of hope in the midst of hopelessness. Sometimes poems leapt out at me immediately, vibrant and alive and searingly present on their pages. Others were subtler in their hold on me. They took seed and grew on every rereading until they'd made a garden of my mind. This dynamic was at once joyous and supremely difficult to navigate, requiring the closest kind of attention for the winning poems to make themselves known to me. Still, I can't be more grateful that this task was mine, and though a winner must be picked, I think this bears mentioning to every poet right now. If you've written anything this year, even half a scrap of a line of a haiku, you've already won. Trust me on this. I have one last story about Heliobrun I want to share with you before announcing the winners. It is said that when water was brought for those too ill to make to the spring itself, its transport was only ever to be made between the dark hours of sunset and sunrise. Along the way, the water bearer was supposed to gain some inkling of the patient's chance at recovery in the form of some sign or omen crossing their path. It is a reminder that whilst healing is never given, there is nonetheless something earned in its pursuit. During times of both individual and collective turmoil, we so often find ourselves turning to poetry for solace. Its language can ground us in the simple fact of our connectedness, answer us even in those moments when we feel we are most alone. As we journey through the darkest parts of this global crisis, carrying the weight of our fears and hopes with us, I hope you too may find solace in this and drink deep. So to announce the runner up of um, the Wigtown Prize, um, hang on a sec, let me get my right, <laughs> too many sheaves of paper at the moment, um, announcing the winner of uh, the runner-up of the Wigtown Prize um, is Jane Frank with her poem Green Bathroom. Um, I thought this poem was a devastating precision of imagery strung through these lines which were taut and hammering as piano strings and I loved the way the speaker's point of view is manifested in a way that seems to dissolve time entirely the way the poem hones in on such specific and sensual details is particularly effective, capturing how the mind can often close like a fist around vivid in environmental details in the wake of traumatic experiences. So thank you so much for your beautiful poem. Uh, and I'm going to pass on to you now. 
Thanks very much for those lovely comments. Uh, it's wonderful to be with you. I'm um, reading, to, uh, well, it's this morning. It's very early in the morning in Brisbane, Australia. So if it looks a little bit dark, that's because it is dark. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to say how wonderful it is to be with you and have this sort of feeling of connection, um, you know, which this strange time makes possible. Um, and uh, this poem actually just peels back a lot of layers back to uh, an earlier time in my life. So um, I'll read the poem now, Green Bathroom. I'm keeping you company in the vintage bathroom of mint green enamel. It is the moments before my childhood ended. I know because your heart is loud and the black and viridescent tiles in the Art Deco design are pristine. I have a photographic memory for, for that geometric pattern, a screensaver from a winter afternoon long, long ago. The sun never shone through that window on the south side of the house, but I imagine the red set of dogs sitting on next door's car tracks below near the front gate, only metres away. It is almost dark, so there is no bird song, but I can hear running water. It would be the hose on its stand in the begonia bed, framed by pink-blue pride of India, the colour of musk. There is also a sound of dripping. It is the high basin tap with the big H and C on left and right. There is a worn spot on the enamel where the water constantly drips and the bitter smell of Ipana toothpaste with its hard crust around the top of the tube its tight coiled used end. Your head is bald and florid, your face turned away, eyes open. Your glasses are not on, but you're wearing a dark striped dressing gown with a cord tie, blue flannel pyjamas. Your long toes are hidden by brown half slippers. Down the hall there is a basket on the table with soup and rolls, a coffee pudding, and in the food safe, there is a tin with custard cream biscuits. A glossy black telephone sits on a polished wood table. Soon it will ring. I have still not seen a dead body. I am also walking home from tennis practice. Everything is calm and still. Only faint laughter from the kitchen. And a cold sky of stars opening. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us all the way from Australia. That's amazing. Um, okay, so this is moving on to the winner of the um, Wigtown Prize, which is um, Anna Woodford with her poem, Portrait of My Grandparents as Souvenirs. Um, what I found so piercingly effective about this poem um, was how it reckons with tensions of memory, of collective nostalgia and the reality of lived experience, which demonstrated the power of how symbols, uh, which demonstrates the power of uh, sim symbols hold in pr processes of dehumanization. But the real sucker punch for me in this poem was how um, it manages to subvert and reconcile such a power dynamic as that with the, by the very same symbolic mechanisms. Um, so uh, passing on to you, Anna, to read your poem. Thank you very much indeed. Um, my poem is about Zitki, which is a Polish word, um, and the translation is lucky Jews. Um, and it, Zitki refers to very controversial little figures you can buy in Poland of sort of stereotypical presentations of Jewish people, often holding up money. Um, and the idea is they're like good luck charms and they bring good luck into your house, typically money. And um, it's obviously very problematic as there are no Jewish people left in these particular areas because of the Holocaust. So they couldn't be called lucky in any sense. Um, I'm going to dedicate this poem to my grandfather, Ludwig. Portrait of my grandparents as souvenirs. Granddad is holding a lucky Polish penny Granny has a pig's head on a breadboard. Grandad is praying though his Torah is upside down. Granny is playing the fiddle. Grandad's insides have been hollowed out of wood and he has a slot in his back. 
granny is squishy plasticine. Behind this beard, granddad is hiding. Behind this candle, granny burns for their son who is nowhere to be seen in these tourist traps around the old ghetto. He escaped to Nottingham and worked at Rally. Now he is a silver bicycle on my charm bracelet or a tiny house for the terrace he named Lvoff after the home he lost. Thank you so much, Anna. Such a powerful poem. Thank you. Um, I'm going to now announce the Alistair Reid Pamphlet Prize. Um, uh, this prize was won by uh, Claire Cox with her incredible pamphlet, A Book of Days. Um, A Book of Days just absolutely enchanted me. Through a skillful blurring and untethering of digital and physical space, I felt as though this pamphlet really could uh, capture the sense of what it's like to live as an individual plugged into the collective, how personal events measure and collide in an age of endless political, social, environmental crises, Twitter spheres, and 24-hour news cycles. This pamphlet strikes a wondrous, beautiful balance of playful, witty, urgent poem and profoundly moving poems whose interconnectedness are a pleasure to behold in the aftermath of reading. So, Claire, I'm going to pass on to you now. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I'm blown away by that introduction, but thank you. And I'm also blown away by Mary Cambridge's exquisitely made book, uh, which I am absolutely privileged to read, read from. Uh, so the book is a book of days, literally. It runs from March to October. Uh, the one I will read uh, this evening uh, is dedicated to uh, Alison Jan Eric Jonas. Sarah, Claire, and the Mighty Rainbow. 7th August, of waiting for my sister to call. My colleague's mother died yesterday. This morning, my colleague sent me a poem about her mother's death. Death, we agreed, was a word reserved for us. The daughters of dead mothers because our mothers had not departed, passed away, gone on to a better place, been our sad loss, whatever the cards might say, our mothers had died and all is changed. This afternoon, my new friend and I talked for five hours. Sun in her blue glass kitchen, Scottish deer hound, collarbone high, eyes of a sorcerer, eyes of a wolf, Madonna lily pollen yellowing his pelt. We talked face to face at her kitchen table, apples urgent and green on the tree outside. My brother-in-law lies in a Copenhagen hospital, punctured lung, left leg in a cage. He's in an induced coma. Every now and again, they lighten the sedation. He mouths a few words around the bulk of the tube protruding from his spitless lips, squeezes my sister's hand, my nephew's hand. Newsfeed tells me Trump is heading to El Paso after the shootings. Uh, my new friend and I talked of that, Trump more than the shootings. She'd written a poem about the wall, showed it to me. I had nothing to offer. I had nothing to offer about the other poem I saw this morning, the one that was too true, too new. My colleague inscribed her mother's death in a poem and sent it to me. Her icon is a gold crest. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for all three readings and for your beautiful comments, Roseanne. I concur that the, the pamphlet is a thing of beauty to hold. Um, thank you, Jerry Cambridge, for putting it together. Um, thank you for your words, Claire. And you can buy it 
uh, through the Wake Town Book Festival uh, bookshop online. So please do. It's just hot off the press. We're delighted by it and glad that you are too. Thank you for that beautiful reading, Claire. So, as we swap over, we are last but not least to the Dumfries and Galloway Fresh Voice Award. Um, and I am going to talk a little bit about that because I was on the panel uh, that judged it. So there were a few of us and there was quite a big bulk of um, entries that came. It was in a huge ring binder. So this year we had loads of entries, tons of poems. Um, some of the entries just had a couple of poems. Some of them had much longer um, not quite collections, but pamphlet length, I would say. Um, so we spent quite a long time wading through them and quite a long time discussing them. There were poems around themes, there were, there were section, collections that worked together, um, but ne not necessarily to a theme. There were poems about love and about war and about history, quite a few poems about COVID, not surprisingly. Um, so like the other judges, we had quite a long time of parsing through and coming up with a short list that we all in the end agreed on the same entry, uh, which we didn't know who it was. Um, and it was just because the images in them were so clear and concise, they just kept coming back. And even though we'd flipped to discussing other entries, the judges, the, the panel would come back to the same language in the poems over and over again saying, what about, let's go back to that set that included this language that we can remember. The, the images were so memorable. So um, I was delighted to learn that the winner is Peter Roberts, who I've met years ago um, at a writing workshop. When I first uh, was involved in the Wigtown Book Festival as the writer in residence five years ago, I think it was, it would have been five years in May for Spring Fling in Sylvana McLean's kitchen so it's a delight um, it's a delight to have to have picked Peter's work um, for this so congratulations Peter and I'm going to pass over to you to read us something from that um, so we can get a sense of why we chose your work thank you very much uh, Marjorie uh, the poem I'm going to read is about insomnia <laughs> and chill, aren't I um, it makes uh, oblique references to Allen Ginsberg's great poem, Howl, and to uh, Edward uh, Hopper's painting, Nighthawks, which hangs in the Chicago Art Museum. It's called Night Owling. And wake sometime after one, get up to take a leak, Come back to keep the beat with every toss and turn, the night owl taunting with its high fluting hooting, a bass alto riff that goes on and on, like Lester Young in Kansas in 1938, saxing the crowd to madness with 72 choruses of the man I love and worry about Moloch's latest incarnation creeping into my brain along Wi-Fi waves, the clock going too slow to an ending, too fast for hopes of sleep. And long to shout down the ghost howl of the insomniac and leave, hunting like a nighthawk through dark frosted streets to that pool of light in the lonely night. Order coffee and corn dogs, share the company of strangers in meaningless talk about the bears and the black hawks, anything so as to seem alive and not lost. And wonder why, last night, I dreamed of Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. Those were the lines that we kept coming back to, the Chicago line, which is really funny that you read that poem. We kept saying, but the Chicago, let's go back to the Chicago poem. So um, thank you for reading that and congratulations. We, we've really enjoyed it. We look forward to reading more of your work. And in fact, I think you're one of the 11 selected by Hugh for, as part of the, the poetry that was read out through the, the festival. So you can find more of Peter's work that way too, a poem there. So Good. I, Thank you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Congratulations. So I think that's the end of our evening tonight. It, it just leaves me to say thank you again to our sponsors, the Gaelic Book 
Council, the Saltar Society and our private sponsors who've helped put the prize forward and supported us for several, for many years um, and helped make this event possible. And the prize money, which normally is handed over in envelopes this year, has been wired. So it's all come through um, in a different way, but we're delighted to be able to make it happen, still make it happen. Thank you to our judges. Anna and George and Roseanne for, for doing the work of parsing through even more um, entries than usual, which we're delighted about. We hope next year you'll keep sending us your work. Um, and again, you can buy Claire's beautiful pamphlet that we've just put off the press um, from Jerry uh, Cambridge through our book festival website. So please go and find it. Please support Claire's work. I can't recommend it highly enough. And then I'm going to do the thing that I'm not supposed to do, which is to thank Claire Nash, who is the person in the office who makes the Poetry Prize possible, who does all the difficult work. She's leaving the room, as I say this, um, who many of the contestants will know, and the tech team, you'll hear them clapping her, because everyone who's been involved in the prize knows that it couldn't happen without her. So I'm grateful. I know everybody else is grateful as well. So thank you, Claire. Um, and thanks to everyone who came along tonight. Thank you to you for watching and taking part. It's really important that we have an audience for our poetry, so we're delighted that you're here with us. Thanks to all the readers and the judges and everyone else, and thanks for being part of the book, Wigtown Book Festival this year. This is the last event, and we're so thrilled to finish off with poetry. As a poet, I'm delighted that we're able to finish this way. So thanks for joining us.